Tired, I know you're tired. I'm glad I'm not. Amen. Yeah. We got called out of the bed before seven this morning and been on the road again. Amen. That's all right. Hey, my car, I, I kind of like it. All I got to do is just point it toward Greenville and take a nap. It knows, it knows how to get up there and how to get back now. Amen. But anyway, good being God's house. All right. I want to finish up John chapter uh, five tonight. Uh, we find that, boy, the crew, uh, the, these people, it was an amazing thing that they wanted to kill the Son of God. Uh, the Bible said that when he, he did this miracle in, in the first part of chapter number five, uh, that the people persecuted Christ and, and they would have killed him if they could. Uh, several times in the Bible you find where they tried to kill Christ. One at Nazareth. When he went back, he said to the prophets, not recognized, he not known his own country. Uh, the Bible said he could do no mighty works among his own people because of the unbelief. They took him to a hill, which was actually a cliff, and would have thrown him off of that thing and killed him. But he passing through the mist, he went right on out. He did that again in Jerusalem when they came to take him. He just passed through the mist. You say, how did he do that? He's God. Amen. Do anything he wants to. Aren't you glad he can do anything he wants to? Now, this crowd should have said, Woo! Boy, I like that. 38 years that man lay impotent. He could not walk. And the Son of God came up and asked him, Will you, will you be made whole? He said, I have no man. I have nobody to help me. And the Lord said, hey, You don't need him. You know, I thank God for the help of men, but sometimes all we need is God. Somebody said, when God's all you got, you find out then He's all you needed to start with. So what happened? He said, rise, take up your bed and walk. And the man immediately rose up, took up his bed, walked. They found him later in the temple rejoicing over it. And they said, who did this? And he told them who it was. And then Jesus revealed Himself back to him. But boy, what a blessing. Now, when we get down here, what I want to look at tonight, verses 30 through 47. You see, when the Messiah came... It wasn't that they missed him. You know, sometimes we, we think, they, boy, they just missed him. No, they didn't miss him. They rejected him. Big difference. They didn't like what they saw. Now, we understand they were looking for a king. They wanted deliverance uh, from Rome. Rome had that heel of Rome on them. Uh, Rome was the last of the seven world empires. We have a lot of large empires today, the British Empire, and different ones stretched out. But Rome controlled the known world, and they controlled it with a fist of iron. Uh, their legions, they, they, they built roads all over Europe and all, all around through Asia Minor and Asia. They built roads uh, to, mil to uh, uh, move armies on same way here in the United States. You know why you've got all these four-lane highways? You notice they go north and south. They go east and west. They weren't built for you to be able to drive to California on. They were built to move armies on. Back when we were kids, it, it was hard to get from Kentucky to Richmond, Virginia. You had to go over the Smoky Mountains, and I mean no little roads. You could read your own license plate when you went around those curves. And I still remember the tractor trailers pulled over with their hoods up and steam rolling out of those things as they were overheated. And then, hey, you got behind them, they wasn't going 10 mile an hour. And then when you got in front of them and going over the mountain, they were <laughs> uh, careening around those roads. They built these roads to move. So what they did, they were controlling Israel. So Israel, instead of looking for a Messiah, was looking for a king. That's why in the parable that Christ uh, gave, the people said, we'll not have this man to reign over us. So this thing going to sleep on me. You pray for it. I'm going to have to keep it going. I had to completely redo this thing, and it don't like it. Now it tries to sleep on me. So anyway, I've been, been working on a lot of things today. So what we find here, you know, in John 1, it said he came into his own, and his own received him not. Isaiah 53 said it this way, He's despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hid as it was our faces 
from him. Notice the terminology. We're used to the part he was despised and rejected of men. But they said we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. The Mosaic law dealt with the inward thing of sin. Why did they reject Christ? When you go back to the Sermon on the Mount, you find this terminology quite a bit. It hath been said of old. Remember when Christ said that? I'll just use one of the illustrations when He was talking about the sin of adultery. He said, It hath been uh, said of old, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But then He said, But I say unto thee, you, if a man look upon a woman to lust, he committed adultery in his heart already. So what they hated about Christ, not that Christ was hard on them, but the outer part of the, of the sin, listen, they could, they could handle that. The law would uh, give the uh, judgment to go along with that sin, take care of that sin. But what Christ did when He came, He dealt with the problem of that sin. Uh, many times doctors, and I'm not knocking them tonight, but they'll treat your symptoms. Instead of digging down and trying to find out why you are where you are. And, and that's the only way that people get healing. I mean, we've, I've got medicine all in my chest. I didn't know what medicine was until I went to the VA. Walked in there empty-handed and come out 20, 20 bottles of pills. When you come out, you ought to watch these guys coming out with the pills in them. They've got a pill for everything uh, except for stupidity. And they've got a placebo for that. So we find here that he dealt with their heart issues. Friend, they didn't like that. In chapter 5, what he did was he established a five-fold witness. He wanted them, see, he, instead of him getting angry at them for persecuting him, wanting to kill him, he was introducing himself in the following verses back to them. He was just giving an introduction. Why? Because he came into the world to save sinners. Paul said, of whom I am chief. He would have all men to be saved, including these that persecuted him and hated him. So he gave a five-fold witness of who they were. With these witnesses, their rejection then had to become willful instead of ignorance. When you know the truth... The truth will make you free or the truth will condemn you on the other side. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But what happens is sometimes as with Janus and Jambres, they're ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth of God. They, they had knowledge. I believe they knew who he was. Matter of fact, when he introduced himself, Look in verse number 26. He said, For as the Father hath life in Himself, so hath He given to the Son to have life in Himself, and hath given Him authority to execute judgment also, because He is the Son of Man. So He dealt with who He was, and now He's going to give them five areas that prove to him them, or should have proved to them who He was. I want to deal with those very quickly tonight. If you look at verses 33 and 34 and 35, he said, Ye sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. Now, when John the Baptist came on the scene, multitudes came to where John the Baptist was. Boy, they'd never heard a man like him. They, uh, he was the, the last of the Old Testament prophets, but they hadn't had one over 400 years. All they had was the written word of God that they went by. Now all of a sudden, John the Baptist, the last of the Old Testament prophets, had introduced the New Testament and the New Covenant. He began to preach the Word of God. And they came to hear John, and they sent to find out who he was. Matter of fact, in John chapter 3, they asked him actually if he was the Christ. And he said, I'm not the Christ. He said, I am the friend of, of the bridegroom. He's a type of Israel being a friend of the bridegroom Christ when he takes his bride to church. You might say that Israel was the best man at, at the wedding is what they're going to be. But we find he talked about John. Now look what he said in verse number 34. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that you might be saved. Now, he introduces John this way. He was a burning and a shining light. 
and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Now, when John the Baptist first started preaching, boy, they rejoiced. They did the same thing actually with Christ. He drew multitudes. I'm talking about thousands came to be healed and to be fed and set and heard Him preach the Word of God. Boy, they rejoiced in His light. When John the Baptist first came, they rejoiced in His light. But something changed after a little while. John the Baptist eventually was beheaded. Just before he was beheaded, he sent two of his last disciples. They'd go ask him if he's the one or should we look for another? You see, Israel revered and feared John. I want to read a little bit out of Matthew. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken in the wind. John didn't shake. But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that are uh, wear a soft uh, clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out to see? A prophet? He said, Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of God, heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, he talked about the kingdom of heaven suffering violence. He said all the prophets and the law were prophesied unto John, and if you receive it, this is Elias or Elijah, which was for to come. So Israel revered this man, but they also feared the man. He was scared to death of John. Israel actually thought that Jesus was John the Baptist risen from the dead. In Matthew 16, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, Whom do men say that I am? And they said, Well, some say that thou art John the Baptist. So we find the first witness of who He was was John the Baptist. Before Christ ever started His public ministry, John the Baptist stepped out. The second witness is found in verse number 36 of, of chapter number 5. He said, But... I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that, I, that the Father hath sent me. So we find the Pharisees understood that Christ came from God. Uh, God. Go back to John chapter number 3. Uh, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi... We know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles which thou doest except God be with him. They, when Nicodemus came, that tells me that the Pharisees, he didn't say, I believe that you're a teacher from, come from God. These Pharisees knew that he had God's hand on him. Talk about the works of Christ. First thing he did, turned out water into wine. The wedding of Cana. Then he witnessed to Nicodemus. And now we find he's healing the impotent man. All through the ministry of Christ, he did things that only God is able to do. Made the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak, cleansed the lepers, raised the dead, stilled the seas. Boy, hey, everything he did. Listen, they followed him. They knew what he did. How come they did not accept him? No man could do what he did. He said, one, you've got to witness of the greatest prophet who has ever been born of woman. I'm talking about better than Isaiah and Jeremiah and all these great men of God in the Old Testament. John the Baptist was the greatest prophet ever born. They had him. He bare witness to Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, twice in John 3, he said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. He said that twice in John chapter number 1. One in verse number 29 and a few verses later on the next day. So they had John. They had that witness. John pointed out the Messiah. He said, that's him right there. That should have been enough, but they rejected what they saw. The second thing, he said, because of the works that I do. The works of God. 
I like what it said over in John chapter number 10. Jesus answered them and said, I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. And in John 21, 25, John made a statement as he closed out the book of John. The last verse in the last chapter of the book of John. This is what he said. And there are so also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. So they had the witness of John. Then they had the witness of what Jesus was doing. So that's two of the five. He introduced the third one in verses 37 and 38. And the Father Himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard His voice at any time to send His shape. Ye have not the word abiding in you, for whom He hath sent, He may believe not. Now, what He did here was He introduces the Father into it. They heard God the Father put His stamp of approval on Jesus several times in the New Testament. One at His baptism. This is my beloved Son. You remember that? They, hey, and everybody that was at that baptism, you need to understand John's baptizing probably hundreds, if not thousands of people in the River Jordan. When Christ came and He baptized him and the Spirit like a dove lit on His shoulder. And, and listen, John testified that this was the Son of God. But then God spoke from heaven and everybody there understood what God said. Can you imagine God speaking from heaven? Hey, last time He did that was Mount Sinai. Now He said, this is my Beloved Son, they had the witness of God. You move a little bit farther on on the Mount of Transfiguration. Boy, when, they, when old Peter, I loved old Peter when he wished not to say, he said, let's make three tra tabernacles, one for Jesus and one for Moses and one for Elijah. It sounded real good, didn't it? And all of a sudden, God just let a cloud shroud everything and the voice said, this is my beloved Son, hear ye Him. And then they saw Jesus only, the Scripture says, but God speaking from heaven. You go over to the book of Peter when it talks about our more sure word of prophecy. In the verses preceding that, he, he talked about the very voice of God and of angels speaking to the children of Israel. And he said, what you've got today is more sure than what God said. That's an interesting statement. So we find that the witness of the Father. He spoke from Sinai. He spoke at the baptism of Jesus and sent, uh, the transfiguration. Over in John 14, Jesus said to old Peter, Hath I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not now known me, Philip? He that hath seen the Father, and now say, how sayest thou, show us the Father? He said, If you've seen me, you've seen him. We find the witness of the Father. So one, they had John the Baptist, the greatest prophet ever born. They had Jesus Christ and the greatest works that have ever done since the foundation of the world. When He spoke everything into existence, that Almighty God walking in the flesh had the same power to do that. And they watched Him as He worked and then the Father gave evidence to Him. Verse number 39, you find the fourth witness that He gives to them. Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of Me. What's He talking about? The Bible is a Jesus book. I call it the Him book, not H-Y-M-N, the H-I-M book. It starts with Jesus Christ over in Genesis 1 and it ends with Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter number uh, 22 and verses number uh, 20 and 21. So we find Christ. I believe everywhere you cut the Word of God, you, it bleeds eternal life in the blood of Christ. Well, what a blessed thing. And he says, hey, if you want to know who I am, he said, you search the Scriptures. He said, the Scriptures are they which speak of me. We find the Bible in, is a Jesus book. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Hebrews 10 said it this way, Then said I, Lo, 
I come in the volume of the book. It is written unto me to do thy will, O God. Listen, you find Jesus Christ all the way through this blessed Bible that you've got in your hand. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. John gave the revelation of Jesus Christ. A lot of Bibles put on there the revelation of John the divine. It was not the revelation of John. It was the revelation of Christ, the unveiling. We find here that Jesus Christ all through the Word of God, listen, as He spoke, how many times did Jesus use the words, I am? I am the light of the world. I am the salt of the earth. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection and the life. You've got seven I am's that He said. Matter of fact, even when they came to take His life, when Judas Iscariot brought these people into the garden to, to take him captive, Jesus turned around and said, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And the Lord said, I am. And the Bible said they fell backward. I don't use this a lot, but the word him is I am he. The word he is italicized, friend. It, hey, he said, I am. They understood. That's why when Pilate questioned him, said, who, who, do you, who are you? He told Pilate, I am God. I am that I am. I'm Jehovah God. I'm the God of the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament. I'm God all the way through the Bible. They had the Word of God. Now, let me help you with something with Pharisees. These Pharisees memorized the Word of God. They knew the Word of God well. They made broad their phylacteries and they put the Word of God on them. They, they put them on their doorpost. When they got up in the morning, they read the Word of God. Through the day, they spoke of the Word of God. When they went to bed at night, they taught the Word of God. They understood them. The Pharisees upheld the spoken Word or the preached Word and the Sadducees, the written Word. They understood what God said and He said, search these Scriptures. You want to know who Jesus is tonight? Search the Scriptures. They were written of Him. So we find the witness of the Scripture. The last thing that they gave Him was the witness of one of the greatest men who ever lived. Why don't you look down in verse number 45 through 47. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There's one that accuses you, even Moses. Ah, Moses accuses them? Boy, they said, we be followers of Moses. Boy, they liked old Moses. The law came by Moses and grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Notice what he said. There's one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Moses wrote quite a bit about Christ. But I want to say he was probably the most revered man in the Bible. Though John the Baptist was the greatest prophet born of woman, Moses was the most revered man in the Word of God. Over in Luke chapter 16, Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. All right. What did Moses and the prophets do? The law and the prophets, the Torah and the Hob Torah, they, they pointed toward Jesus Christ. We've been working in the book of Leviticus, uh, Exodus, uh, over getting the law, the moral law, the civil law, uh, the ceremonial law, all the, these laws. What they do? They pointed to Jesus Christ. They pointed that atonement that they had, that atonement pointed toward the propitiation that was coming that was through Jesus Christ. So he said, hey, Moses spake of me. All right. Moses spoke of Christ. Over in Deuteronomy, Moses said this, The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet in the midst of thee of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. When he wrote that in Deuteronomy, you need to watch how the wording is in your Bible. He said, a prophet like unto me. The word prophet, the first letter is uh, capitalized. Anytime you see one like that, it, it's pointing to Christ Himself. It's a capital P, prophet. 
that he said. And Moses told him, he's going to raise up a prophet with a capital P, and he's going to be like unto me. But he said, you need to hearken unto him. Over in Acts chapter number 3, For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear all and all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. You see, Christ was counted more worthy than Moses. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in Hebrews 3, but he talked about Moses was faithful in all his house. But Christ was faithful over his house. Moses was not faithful over the house. He was faithful in the house of God. But Christ was faithful over the house of God. So what he's doing in here, and I'll just sum it up very quickly. As he introduces himself, he's going to give them five witnesses that show who Jesus Christ really was. You see, when he came into his own, the Bible said they received him not. Not that they didn't know who he was. I believe they did know who he was. I just believe they don't, didn't like what they saw. and They didn't like what they heard. Because there was no man in this world like Jesus Christ. And he gave them here a five-fold witness. And I believe tonight that if people will seek him with all of their hearts, they'll find him. I believe they'll do that. I, I don't understand a lot about a lot of things in the Bible. I, I don't have it all. Somebody said, you know a lot about the Bible. Boy, the more I study the Bible, I think the less I know about it. I mean, you can go through a verse of Scripture a hundred times and see something you haven't seen the hundredth time you go through it. I think it is a fathomless book. I believe that it contains the mind of God Himself uh, for us. And I believe the deeper you dig, the deeper that thing gets. But I thank God tonight that He cared enough for these Jewish people. He's going to die for their sin. But He cared enough for them that instead of scolding these in chapter number 5 or destroying these in chapter number 5 or whatever, He took the time to give them a five-fold witness that if you want to know who I am, here it is. And He put that out to them. And that gave them with that knowledge accountability to the knowledge that they had. I believe we're accountable for what we know. Amen. Let's stand tonight and we're going to have an invitation tonight. Told you if you just listen fast tonight. Amen. Fivefold witness. He loved these people. They didn't like him sometimes. As a matter of fact, they rejected him. But I believe with all my heart that they knew who he was. I believe they knew who Christ was. <laughs>